Serious, Redditors that have adopted unadoptable animals, what's their story, and yours? He was a 10 year old black tomcat who had bounced around fosters and the shelter for 2 years and needed a special diet. In all that time he was available for adoption but nobody had even inquired, and he needed out of his current foster ASAP since an elderly cat owned by the people had suddenly taken a dislike to him. We took him in and were warned that he was so terrified of people he'd likely hide under the furniture for 2 months before we'd see him. This seemed to be right on the money since the moment his crate was opened he zoomed under the bed and stayed there for the rest of the day and into the night. We left food and water under there and a litter tray in the corner, but there was no coaxing him out for love nor money, so we'd have to sleep with the terrified cat under us. Then came 3am, when he decided to sit on my face and demand petting. The little guy would never have to go back to the shelter again. Cat tax. Pay up. LOL. Our humane society had a bonded pair of beagles, who had to be adopted together. They were there for 7 months because no one wanted two at once. My husband volunteered at the shelter, I had finally convinced him we should get a dog, when he turned around and convinced me we should get two. There's hardly any room for me in the bed at night now. That was a power play, and you lost, you were supposed to counter by suggesting you adopt the whole shelter. I love butthole cats. Our orange fluff was at the shelter for 6 years and was adopted out and returned no less than 4 times. We've had him a full year plus now and he's just the most precious creature. An absolute heck cat, yes, but also sweet and super adorable. His most recent habit is sleeping under the covers with his head stuck out like a human. Freaking cute. Me and my family fostered dogs 9 times and the last one we ended up adopting after half a day. We suspect she was abused verbally and physically. She was so extremely scared of men for probably 2 years. I think we have had her for a little over 2 years and she's not that scared anymore. Being around my dad and brother was bad. She eventually loved and adored my dad quickly though but any quick sudden movements and noises scared the bajesses out of her. My dad has a friend who is 6 feet 7 I think and she was scared out of her mind when she met him but she loves him now. She's such a cutie and she is so playful and adorable. Dog tax is required. When I was a kid I took a pet rat from a friend whose mom didn't want it in their house anymore. A lot of people hate rats but he was an awesome pet. They're smart and friendly and surprisingly trainable. I was a weird lonely kid back then and he got me through a rough time. I still miss the little dude. R.I.P. Amelia had been in the shelter for close to 6 months. Reason being she was a very large female dog and was very shy and unaffectionate. She saw me and walked into my arms for a hug. I've never seen a dog hug someone before. She didn't change much. Still anxious and shy, but she adores my mom and me. Every time I visit home to see her, she still insists on sleeping right next to me. She's spoiled rotten. I never wanted a puppy. When I made my argument to my folks for getting a dog, I insisted we visit the shelter to find an older dog who needed the home more. I can't imagine buying a puppy I'm always going to be an adopter. Through luck and choice, we've pretty much only ever had borderline and adoptable dogs. Borderline because we are the suckers who fall in love with them. My childhood dog set the tradition. A shepherd mix riddled with BBs, terrified of men and with a ferocious demeanor that made most shelter visitors wary of even passing his kennel. We'd found a criminal hiding in our basement a week or two prior, and my dad worked 24 hour shifts, so off we went to get a dog. When I as a wayfish and bossy 4 year old approached his cage and told him to sit, he did. He stopped barking, calmed down and sat. He had training, and I was about the least intimidating human he'd seen in a long time. After a while of me chatting at him in the way only an excited little kid can, he lay down and got comfy, then started scooching closer and closer to the chain link until I could scratch him. Mum signed the papers and he came home with us that day. That dog, he came home and said thanks by eating my bedroom door. He wouldn't let my dad down the hall into my room for months. He wouldn't eat if anyone could see him. Couldn't go on walks in the daytime because men are people who exist. Then I got hurt. Fell out of a tree and knocked the wind out of myself. Dad rushed over and carried me inside. What a crisis for the dog. His human was hurt. And the big scary man was holding her. But helping and the only way to console tiny human was to set aside the fear and approach. 
And so he did, because tears needed to be licked and goddamn it he was just the dog for the job. My dad was so excited that the dog warmed up to him even that little bit, that later that day, he dropped a cheeseburger and didn't even notice. And the next day, he must have still been excited because he dropped a little steak. And so it began. The dog started trusting, started accepting food when people were in the room, so long as you didn't look, started joining in on family cuddles, and by the end of his time with us, that dog was sleeping with his head on my dad's pillow, snoring right in his face, letting me feed him with a fork, and the only person he truly hated was the neighbor who loved shooting out in the back swamp, but I would too if my only experience with guns was a hip full of pellets. This was beautiful. I grew up in a family that specifically adopted the unadoptable and so when it came time to have my own it felt weird bucking the trend, although one kitten slipped through when we took his mum. Anyway, we lost a year old feral who clearly hadn't developed properly and his twin was not the same so we decided to hunt out another feral. I rang the cat's protection and asked to see their most hissy, spitty, and lovable messes. They delivered. Hidden away from people with no clue was a teeny tiny feral black ball of smell. She was beautiful 4 weeks kittened on permanent high alert and hissed and scratched all the time. I had to be on isolation because she's viciously attacked others, which was mental because she was tiny. I know it sounds insane but we took the leap and brought her home a week later. They insisted that she would never ever be a domestic cat. First few days she would charge at the older cats like a rocket when we tried to integrate and she wouldn't let us touch her. She had masses of long black fur and it was only a matter of time before it matted beyond repair. So, I whacked on the oven gloves put on my thickest dressing gown with a second to hold her in and set up the combs. Managed to grab her and pin her down. I thought she was going to take my eye out at one point. Flipped her into the dressing gown and forcible combed her. She just instantly switched to her purring. Nursing. Dribbling mess or adorable. Completely relaxed. Even rolled over to let me get her tummy. It was insane. I've had cats hide for literal years before they become normalish but this thing. I just don't think anyone had ever even tried. And if I hadn't called she would have been kept away from everyone because no one had the time to try to brush her and that was all she needed. It's been just over a year and her and the twin are best buds and play all day. When people come over she hides under the bed and only trusts me and my FH but my god once the comb is out, she's there. Best risk we ever took. Cat tax. We were the third owners of our dog. She just didn't warm up to anyone. We bought her home. And for over a year she wouldn't even look at us when we came in the door. We had to coax her outside for walks with meat treats. We had to hug her when we washed her to stop her shaking. We had to let her know it was okay to eat and give her lots of time to get through it. She's 8 now. And a different dog. She trots up to me when I get home and leans on me for a huge cuddle. She weighs about 80 pounds. It's the best. She knows bumps me just to remind me she's here if I haven't paid her enough attention. She loves kids, all other animals and people of every walk of life. Under all those nerves and fears of being left behind, she was the world's greatest ever dog waiting to be uncovered. I wish I could have 30 more years with her. These last 6 have gone by way too fast. I am a reptile amphibian fish arachnid guy, so when I say I have no idea what I got myself into I mean it. Anyway, a friend of mine called me asking to borrow my truck. When I showed up I was faced with a 7 year old buckskin horse that my friend had found on a recently abandoned farm and had received the go ahead to take her in. This poor girl had been mistreated since day 1. Her hooves were severely cracked, broken, and misshapen. She had been kicked by another horse resulting in a broken leg that was left untreated and never healed correctly. She was malnourished, underweight and had a whole host of parasites and health issues. On top of all that she won't let us anywhere near her. She almost kicked my friend in his face and tried to bite me several times as we were trying to get her in the trailer. After finally getting her in the trailer we got her to her new home. A wide open space with plenty of grass, trees and an open barn. The vet unfortunately was bitten a few times trying to examine her and almost left if we hadn't begged them to stay. We got her the meds she needed and put her on a diet to bring her weight up. 
After spending a good amount of time trying to warm her up to people and eventually she would let us come up and touch her without being bitten or her running away. We got a farrier out to look at her hooves and over time he slowly trimmed and corrected her hoofs the best he could. After they were sufficiently healed he shooed her. And about a year later she was healthy, happy and well mannered. Unfortunately we could do next to nothing about the messed up leg but it didn't seem to slow her down. Just means she would never be able to be ridden or used for anything weight intensive but I don't think she cared. She now spends her days running around on a farm. All of this started because my friend heard that she was gonna be put down due to her state of being at the time. My grandmother had a cat when I was growing up that terrified everybody. It was a demon. It was an alley city cat that my aunt randomly found in the CBD one day and somehow managed to bring it home. It was a gorgeous white cat with blue eyes. No scars or anything. It was that good a fighter. From the moment she brought it home the only people that could touch it was my aunt and my grandmother. Most other people couldn't even look at the cat and it would attack them. I've personally seen it jump over a wall to pick a fight with two German Shepherd dogs. It would routinely chase small dogs down the road. It hated small children and would attack my brother often. It did once and my dad threw a brick at it. It shrugged off the brick then got angry. It also once tried to pick a fight with a bus. That sucker ended up dying of old age. Everyone was glad to see it go except my aunt and my grandmother. Frick that cat. I love cats though. I would pay good money to see a cat pick a fight with a bus. I went in to adopt a kitten I had seen online. I ended up getting her and her brother as he was the only one in the litter who hadn't been adopted. He was super friendly and sweet right away and she was more hesitant. The first night I had her she crawled up in the middle of the night and slept with her face on my face. The shelter had asked me to follow up in a few weeks and so I updated them and said she was great and they told me they had been worried because she was not a friendly kitten at all. For her first few years she wouldn't really let anyone pick her up but me. But now when people are over she seeks it attention. Not nearly as sad or as big of a turnaround as a lot of these stories. I just think she is territorial and likes her space on her terms. Neither have ever bitten or scratched me. I adopted a dog about 4 years ago. Her name is Maple. And while the shelter didn't tell me about any problems. She later turned out to have quite a few. I suspect she or her mother were beaten with some sort of weapon. Because she knows what a weapon is. Knife. Sword. Gun. ETC. And will get really scared and upset if someone approaches her holding one. Even if it's a toy. When I first adopted her. She was scared to death of men. And would submissive pee every time my dad talked to her about her. When my dad had a tall. Deep voice friend over for dinner. Maple wouldn't even enter the room. She just hid under a chair with her tail tucked until he left. I also think she may have been taken from her mother too early. She was only 3 months old when I got her. And for the first year of having her, she had severe separation anxiety. If I left the room, she had to go with me. If I was out of her sight for more than 30 seconds, she would start crying and looking for me. She's pretty much better now. Although she still has a fear of weapons and won't go near deep voice men. But as I type this she is sleeping on the couch peacefully, waiting for me to go to bed so she can go to bed too. I sort of wish I knew who adopted her siblings so I could see if they had the same fears triggers. But that likely won't happen. Regardless, if your dog is named Aspen or Fern, and you've had them for about 4 years, HMU. If I recall correctly Fern and Maple are both black dogs with tan markings, while Aspen is tan brown. Likely some sort of Dax and Manchester Terrier mix. Adorable curly tail. A few years back, my mom and I adopted a cat from our local humane society after being catless for a few years. We went in and were checking out the different cats when my mom said she found one that she liked. They told us that someone had found her abandoned in a dumpster and that she was really skittish and shy and had been at the shelter for some time. My mom absolutely fell in love with her and we took her home that day. For the first year we had her, she hid from us and would actively avoid any room we were in. At the time, it was a little frustrating but we gave her time to adjust and man, am I glad we did. We've had her for almost 12 years now and she has become the sweetest cat I've ever had. My mom and I have had terrible luck with cats but we finally managed to find a wonderful one. Her name is Daisy, but I call her Bun. 
and I wouldn't trade her for the world. I live on my own now and don't think I could survive without her. She sleeps in my bed every night and constantly climbs in my lap or follows me around the house. Whenever I'm getting ready for bed, she'll climb onto my chest and throw herself down next to my head, so that her face is pressed against mine. Not to mention, she's a purring machine. Bun is honestly such a blessing and I'm glad we never gave up on her, despite her being so shy and a little cold for the first year. I feel like a proud parent when I talk about her because I just adore and love her so much. For anyone interested, there's a picture of her in my post history. My fiance adopted a troubled cat before we met. She is very shy and does not like being handled at all. My fiance likes to pick her up and make her dance etc. She hates this. I understand how she likes contact. I just hold my hand still and let her rub up against it. Sometimes she nibbles my arm. And sometimes the nibbles hurt. But she has never drawn blood. She likes to sleep on my side of the bed. She is my familiar. I love her. Please advocate on your cat's behalf or your fiancé's behavior. The poor cat will be traumatized. Please help him see that it is making your cat really unhappy and that she is not there as amusement. Thank you for showing her love. She clearly really appreciates you. My mother's cat, Banana Boat was at our local humane society for most of her 1.5 years of life. Adopted. Returned. Repeat. She was found on a boat as an abandoned kitten with her leg nearly severed. They sewed it back on. She is very talkative and a bulldozer. She will quite literally push through anything and make lots of noise to get what she wants. It's cute. But other people mistook this as hunger and unhappiness and fed little Banana Boat the tuxedo cat until she became obese. My mother adopted her and Banana Boat instantly loved everybody. Not sure why so many people returned her. Nana is a lovely kitty and provides a ton of love. This story isn't so sad. It's more confusing because I am not sure what was wrong with her. Maybe most people want an independent cat. But she definitely needs to be included in everything. Sorry for any typos. Mobile and fat fingers isn't a good combo. My cat broke my heart. He was a feral rescue cat I took for two weeks so he would get used to living inside. He was kicked out of his previous foster home for attacking their other animals. And one of the adults. And most guests. I had one temperamental and bossy rescue dog who also had issues but knew she would not let a cat boss her around. My cat never became noticeably better tempered. However, he and the dog ended up being really close. They would sleep next to each other in the sun. Or in front of the fire and when dog died, he wouldn't leave me for days. I was checked on every hour. He terrified my relatives, attacked my guests, left permanent scars on me and killed a lot of birds, rats and mice. He also was afraid of the rain and insisted I sat with him in the hall during bad storms. He would sometimes sleep in my hair and tore all my pillowcases to shreds. He waited for me every day and no other cats or animals were allowed near me. He became seriously ill with arthritis, diabetes, a fused back and bad teeth. I medicated him twice a day, watched his diet and nursed him through his lows and diabetic comas. He would get his morning cuddles and head rubs on the floor until he had enough and bit me. Every day, we had a connection and I love him so much. I hate coming home because he isn't here. I miss him every day. Hugs. Black thumb cat who drools when he purrs, loudly snorks when he eats, and can't just be petted but must actively and sometimes aggressively press against your touch. He is mine and only mine and very clingy. He's very sick and so my parents have been watching him because they're retired and I am all alone and so so lonely. I miss my snorker. Adopted a 10 year old dachshund who was incredibly aggressive towards people. His then owner told me this story. That dog was his parents prized possession. They would show him at dog contests and he would win a lot of prizes. He was gorgeous. They treated him very well. One day, he did not give any more details than that and it was pre-internet days. His dad killed his mum in front of the dog. The dog was traumatized and a couple of years after the event, which brings us to the time of my adopting him, he would still howl and cry for hours after hearing sirens, be it ambulances, fire trucks or police. They basically had him in a room away from anyone ever as he would lash out at anyone trying to touch him. So I took him in in a heartbeat. We were 5 people in the house and 3 other dogs. The first couple of days I left him to his own devices. 
he was basically cowering behind an armchair. I would throw food at him so as not to approach him and stress him. At night, I made sure the door to the living room was closed so the other dogs couldn't come to hassle him. Every day after that I would come a little nearer to him, talking to him softly. On day 5, he initiated contact with my other dachshund, a miniature half his size. Together they went to the garden and met with the other dogs. From there he had become part of their pack and was approachable by the people of the household on the condition of not surprising him with physical contact. Until he heard a siren again. He went back to howling and shaking and looking so miserable. So I forcefully took him in my arms and told him I had his back. He was safe here. Something broke the rut he was in and he cuddled with me for the longest time. He was pretty much at ease in the house by then and would come for a cuddle if he heard a siren. And then one day he didn't. He didn't need the reassurance anymore. All in all it took a month for him to behave like he'd always been mine and had no hang ups about his past anymore. He passed one week shy of his 20th birthday. He took a chunk of my heart with him when he left. But you know what? He's very welcome to it. Got a street dog one time as a kid. When my mom first brought it home it had no fur and was basically just skin and bones. She was obviously abused because if you touched her she would turn around and attack to defend herself. After about a year she was looking healthy however, she had bad seizures and there was little we could do to help her. After about 2 years the vet thought the best idea was to put her down as she was having a seizure every day at least. Mine's not quite as lost cause as some of the other stories here, but my cat Lychee was generally considered a forever shelter cat. She didn't get along with the other cats, would bite and claw at people who tried to pet her, and was very vocal. I was in my first apartment after college and I knew I needed a pet. When I first saw her and read her background card, I felt sad for her. She had been found in the nearby city, obviously had been on the streets for a while but was also obviously not a feral cat. I'm a bleeding heart and have a severe soft spot for animals that no one else wants. I started petting her in the crate and she began chewing on my fingers. Not too aggressive, but I could see why some people would be scared away because of it. In any case, I decided she would be mine and I immediately adopted her, after a short period verifying my background. When I went to show the woman which cat I wanted, her response was you want that one. She was something of a salty cat, likes to pick fights, thinks biting is a way to show affection, likes to roll around in her own litter, but, she's also a mosh now, loves to sleep with me, specifically on top of me, which I've discovered I quite enjoy, she still bites as a sign of affection, and she has a number of quirks, I describe her to others as having autism, because she doesn't seem to understand normal socialization, but I love her. My mum fell in love with a year old tortoise shell kitty at the shelter. She was marked as not good for families with young children or other pets and demonstrated this marker when she was introduced to my brothers. She had clearly been abused, she was skittish and was just terrified of people and other cats. Mum adopted her anyway. Her first act at our house was to climb in the air vent in the side of the deep freezer and hide up in the motor, only coming out to eat and pee when no one was around. Both times a new kitten came home she was caught in a weird state of terrified and wanting to care for the baby. Eventually after a few months she would get used to the new cat and stop attacking them. She's about 10 now, and she's mellowed out in her older years. She now tolerates my kids, she's really cuddly and affectionate, and she clearly loves the other cats in the house. Hardly the same scared creature that mum brought home all those years ago. 20 or so years ago my dad and I went to the local kill shelter to adopt a pit bull puppy he'd heard about. Turns out she's 10 years old not 10 months and not good with kids, poor thing. So we're still looking. Dogs are all going nuts and it seems we aren't getting a dog. Then a scraggly pup calmly walks up to the fence, puts up his paw and makes a low wooing sound at us. Looked like a husky chow mix. Red body with a grey face, legs and the tuft of his tail. Half starved, hair a mess covered in ticks. Staff explains he's a good dog but wouldn't interact with potential owners. He'd been homeless and was wary that they were putting him down tomorrow and if we wouldn't at least take it out of the yard and get to know him. We took him home and within 48 hours he accepted us. Turns out he was Chow Wolf and our old vet refused to treat him, so we found a new vet. He doubled in size and was our little destroyer of worlds. Named him Reggie cause he's red and grey. Ate anything that wandered into the yard. 
tore up burglars twice and was the most loyal butthole. Never managed to get him 100% trained. He was always a bit wild. He liked our next door neighbor more than us. Often had to be drug out of the dog park. A male picked a fight and Reggie was going to finish that crap. He lived his final years in rural AR often running loose and getting in all kinds of trouble. You were my best friend. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.